Hi everybody, I'm Bill from InSitio Ecosystems and we're here today in the InSitio Customer Experience Center and we're here to show you an experiment on the importance of drainage. One of the things I'd like to show you is my black jeans terrarium here and the bromeliad axle in the back. What you see here is that the bromeliad axle has some feces left behind. What happens here is uh, every day for 20 to 30 seconds, our mist system comes on and it washes that bromeliad axle off and everything runs into the bottom of the axle. But also, because we know the importance of uh, flushing our terrariums, we run our misting systems five to seven minutes twice a week. You can run them for an hour if you like because of the way our drainage is set up. But we're trying, what we do then is try and flush off all the urine and feces from our bromeliads to make them a little less uh, toxic for the plants as well as reduce the parasitic load in the terrarium overall. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Bill again here. And we're, here we are looking at our experiment setup. The objective of the experiment is to show you the difference in drainage between an in situ terrarium and a typical uh, Exoterra Zoomed type model, false bottom drainage system and, and what happens with that. Uh, we have I mean, measuring cups, dye that will simulate the feces and urine that's coming off of the frogs, LECA, which we use to set up the in situ terrarium, and then water, different me measuring uh, uh, systems for water and then drainage. And so the first step is to show you how we set up the in situ terrarium. What I'm gonna do is take LECA and pour it into the bottom of the trough. You can um, see how to do this. We, we show you how to do this in our flyer that we put in every box for every terrarium that we sell is how to set this up. But essentially what I've done is I've created a space of LECA in the bottom of the trough that water will not uh, uh, occupy any longer. So what that means is we're gonna have about half of this is LECA and about half of it's gonna be water. And so when you cycle the water system, it'll take a lot less water to change out all this water that's hanging out down here in this trough because there's not that much water in the tank. So what I've got here is I've got a quart of water and I'm going to pour it in and I'm gonna stop pouring in when we can see the water coming down this tube. And then we'll tell you how much water is actually in the system. Okay, so here we go. I can see it coming up to the bottom of the drain already. We're about a cup and a half into it. Pretty soon this whole thing will start to drain. There you go, there it goes, right there. So what this is showing us is that there's two cups or less of water in the system when you put the LECA in it. So we've already measured out what it really, it's gonna to take to fill this up earlier today. So I wanna show you, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyways, just to show you. It's about six liters or a gallon and a half. And so we're just going to pour that in like this. That's about as low as I could get the drain on this and not and feel confident that I'm not breaking the glass. So, and you can see here by the top that we put on it, it's just about the same size as our Amazonian in terms of footprint. And as you can see over here, it's starting to drain. So six liters versus two cups. Okay, so the next step here is we're gonna put a milliliter of trichome stain into each of these solutions, all right? And actually I'm gonna put it in exactly the same spot. So we suck it up here. Okay, and then right in the middle. That's a milliliter.
and there is a milliliter there. What we've done is we put trichome stain in the terrariums to simulate the biological load or the feces in urine of the terrarium, right? And what we're doing is flushing it out. What I have here is a camera, uh, my iPhone that I'm gonna use as a timer. Ready? Okay, and we're gonna start now. Just a little bit of trivia. It takes, each mist head uh, mists about a half a cup per minute. Just to let you know about what water flow rate is coming out of the mist head. Oh. I can still see the track on puddle in the middle, but it's just now starting to run down into the trough. And you can see here the trichome stain, it's really done nothing at all, it's just sitting there. And here you can see the trichome stain draining straight away. We're at a minute and 44 seconds. And over here on the exoteric tank, trichome stain really hasn't changed its composition or, or anything. And we're getting essentially clear water dripping out of the bottom here. Okay, so what we want to show here is that this water started running clear at about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. It was clear before that, but we caught it at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Here we are at 3 minutes and 35 seconds already. It's all well and clear. In the conventional tank, the trichome stain really hasn't changed at all. And in fact, Water seems to be collecting in the back and it's like kind of migrating more towards the front and it's not draining at all. Of course, in the back, the drain water coming out of the back of the tank is clear. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look down here and see what the volume of water it was to take the drain, the trichrome strain stain out of the in situ tank. And what you can see here is it's less than a liter of water right, or quart, right? And so this happened at, at four minutes and 30 seconds. You know, you had a complete flush. Now we could have put the trichome stain in the corner, of in either of the corners, and it might have taken a little longer. But what this is trying to show you is that um, the drainage time for the in-situ tank is really quick. Over here on the, uh, the standard tank, the conventional tank, we're still purple. All the all the dye is still in the water, and it's not drained hardly at all. If you look at the drain water, all right, and I'll show you the drain water here in just a second. The exact same amount of water. It's about a, a liter, right? And look at the two, the difference in the two, all right? So here you can see that the, the in situ tank has got a lot more of the, of the uh, biological load and the conventional tank does not. So what this says is over time, the biological load in this water here is going to just is going to rise and it's going to go higher and higher and higher until it eventually becomes like this. 
right? And then once it becomes like this, then it'll start to drain, but it could take a month or a year and it could accumulate that biological load for a very long time, become very toxic. Our goal is to try and get this stuff out of the tank as quick as we can. And we actually think that that's part of the way the rainforest actually works. Everything gets rinsed off. Anything that biological load gets washed down into the rivers, the major rivers, and then out into the ocean, uh, and, you know, like it's been doing for billions of years. Um, and so I think that concludes our story here and our experiment. In a really big way, it shows us that the in-situ tanks really do a good job of taking down your biological load. And that's a really important part of raising a healthy tank. Thanks for watching us. This is Bill at in-situ again, and hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.